Tyrol, a region in the north of Italy, a geographical area bordered by the Alps to the north and the Dolomite mountain range to the south, a location that produces a climate of warm days and cool nights, a climate that is ideal for the growing and cultivation of wine. Since 1823, the Alois Legeda Winery has produced wines of distinction and balance, with the name Alois being handed down to each successive son as they are brought into the world of winemaking, assuming the responsibilities and control of the business, a business that is both successful and respected. Yet, since 2004, this generation has dispensed with conventional, chemical agriculture and has gone beyond the world of organic farming to a dimension more associated with anthroposophy and the farm as an individuality, as a living organism, the practice of biodynamics. I think in a biodynamic world, we see a plant not just as something physical, but we, have, we see behind the, the physical part also an astral, etheric part, a spirit. Um, and so we have a different approach to the plants. And this makes a big difference to, uh, to the traditional farming. My mother, she always worked her vegetable garden in a biodynamic way. And so I was grown up in that, in that ambience. And so it was always a fact that there are some influences. And there, and there, and there were, it was clear that nature has incredible power. Um, but at the beginning, as I took over the winery in the 70s, I, I hadn't, uh, yeah, I had not the courage to do it in a larger scale, because if you do your vegetable garden, uh, there's few, uh, I don't know, few square meters, a hundred square meters, it's easy, but if you do it on a larger scale, uh, it becomes more complex. And so it was a dream for already in the 70s, and finally became a reality in the, in the 90s, when we started to do real experiment in different vineyards. And finally, in 2004, we converted the whole the farm to biodynamic farming methods. We take away every year the grapes or the fruit, so we have to give something back to the plants. In the wild nature you have this circle. The plants produce organic material, the organic material falls down to the earth, is transformed to humus, and humus is again the nutrition for the plants. The main objective in the biodynamic farming is to build up a lot of humus. There are different ways. The most well-known preparation is the whole menu, a certain period of the year, end of September, when the nights become longer as the days. All the forces of nature are going into earth, so uh, all the power is in the earth. We put uh, fill the manure in horns, cow horns, and make a hole in the soil where we feel that uh, there is a good uh, energy and the right uh, humidity. We put all the horns we need in the, in the hole and then fill it up. And six months later, in May, we take out the horns and the fresh manure has been transformed in a fantastic humus. The horn manure helps the soil to digest, you can say in a certain way, to organic material to humus. We take 90 grams of horn manure per hectare. We take 30 liters of water per hectare um, and then we dynamize it. Imagine a, a standing barrel and um, we turn it around in one direction and as soon as we have formed a deep vortex, we change the direction. Every time we turn the direction, we create chaos and that allows that all the energy, the information 
the attitudes and the characteristic of the horn manure has been passed into the water. After one hour of dynamization, we take the water out from the barrel and fill it in little containers. We call them Bugelspritzen in German. Uh, and then we put them on our shoulders. We go through the vineyard, through the vines, yeah, and spray the 30 liters uh, on the hectare. But it's uh, not a question of quantity, it's a question of quality. And in the drops, we have all the energy of the manure. And so um, the soil starts to get different. The consistency became different. There was more granulosity. The soil is open, softer. Another important one is the horn silica. The horn silica is uh, powdered quartz. Again, we put it in, in cow horns, but in the summertime, but again the same dynamization. But then we spray it not on the soil as the 500, the horn manure, but we spray it on the leaves. And so this film of water and, and, and silica, you find it at the end on the, on, the, on the leaves. And that film helps to attract even more light and so the grape, the fruit of the plants can ripen better. Uh, they become more tasty and uh, incredibly well, well balanced. One of the methods we use to make the soil richer with humus is to use the compost. The biodynamic compost is made similar as the bioorganic compost, so we take a lot of manure, organic materials, leaves, little shoots, but then we add uh, the compost preparations Rudolf Steiner mentioned. We have six compost preparations. One is nettle, valerian, chamomile, dandelion, horsetail and oak bark. All those substances has to be transformed uh, to make sure that all the energy can be taken by the plant. We inject those preparations at the beginning as, as soon as we have made the, the compost hills and then maybe after a few months we, we turn the compost and uh, after one year we have a perfectly transformed compost and then we put it next to the vines. Another method is the cover crop. Every second row is uh, opened after the harvest, put over 20 different seeds. And so the year after, the plants grow up and in the springtime we have a fantastic crop of the, the, all those different grasses, um, grain, beans, peas, yeah, colorful, fantastic and when they are flowering we cut them and we bring them into the soil and so we have this green fertilizer, yeah, natural fertilizer on the soil. Nature is much more powerful than we are, and so we have to learn to understand the nature. We have to understand the, the forces nature offers you and use it in the right way. I think it was wrong that we thought the technique could substitute nature. As soon as we start to control the nature or to, to cultivate the nature, the agriculture, uh, we have to be very careful to keep that balance and the the wrong approach was in the last 200 years that first of all with the uh, monoculture we started to use only one plant in a, in a cer certain uh, space yeah uh, then we rises raised up the, the yields then we started to uh, to substitute the humus what is the natural nutrition of the plants with the fertilizers then we started to use chemicals uh, herbicides and many other chemical products and we lost completely the balance. And so the biodynamic farming methods 
is uh, one way to bring back to the balance, the biological balance, the cultivated plants. Rudolf Steiner was a, um, a genius because he was able to bring together all the experience the human being did or had in thousands and thousands of years uh, to understand the correlation between all these aspects and uh, he put it on a scientific, uh, on a spiritual base. Of course he did only some lessons, he gave indications, he didn't tell us uh, exactly what to do. But I think the biodynamic learned us that we have to consider many different aspects. The building uh, we did in the 1995, the new winery, has been built only with uh, natural materials, with a lot of wood, with stone, without using synthetic materials, because I think it's important that people uh, who are working in our winery, but also the wines, can stay there uh, and in a natural ambience. We decided to, to use an yeah, innovative energy concept. I think the sustainability is a very important aspect. One important decision was not to produce any CO2. Instead, we decided to use the energy of the water and the geothermy. That means we take the water from the ground, the extract energy, and so we produce, can produce hot water. The same if we have to climatize, we do the opposite. It's very important not to see only one aspect. I mean, we're producing wine, and of course, we produce wine, uh, taking grapes and transform them, let them ferment the, the vinification tower, which um, allows us to produce, to vinify the grapes without any use of pumps or mechanical transportation. Another important factor was the natural climatization of the cellars. In the front of the, of the new building, it's a big, high, large uh, rock wall. And that uh, allows us to chill down the air in a natural way, using the rock. The rock has the whole year long 10, 12 degrees. Up top of the building, the hot air comes in. Along the rock wall, it cools down, and at the bottom, we take it away and aerate all the cellars. So it's in a very natural way, without using energy, we can control the temperatures in the cellars. It's also important to make sure that in the cellar work is done in the right way and we have to consider there too the influence of the cosmos, of the moon, of the planets.
many people say that making wine is an art. I don't know if it's true. Of course, every work, if it's done properly and with a lot of engagement, it's maybe an art piece. But uh, beside that, I think art is a very important uh, visual art or, mu uh, or music art is a very important addition to our daily life and to our work. An art piece I like very much is the, the, uh, the lullaby for barrels and wine. It's a music you can hear in the cellar where we have the barrels, where the wines are fine and aged. The idea of the artist, he chose Bach, and Bach is considered to be the master of harmony. And so the idea was to have a lot of harmony in the room, because our aim is to produce wines with harmony. And the third aspect, also very interesting, is was the fact that we need time. We should, not only for us, for ourselves, but also we should give to the wine a lot more time to find, to age, and therefore he slowed down the music. So from one minute, uh, you can hear the sixth concert of Brandenburg, but from one minute he, he delayed the music to one hour, and so you can hear the very spheric tones, and that's very, um, yeah, suggestive. <laughs> We love it. Okay, and everybody knows if it's a negotiant, all you see today has a little bit nothing to do with the freedom of but in fact, it is the same thing. It was our idea, it is our expertise in terms of winemaking and marketing that goes into that. But it's done in a different place. It's we needed new labels for some of our wines, so we asked a group of artists to come up to the winery. The idea was to experience our, our winery and they should give us an artistic idea. And then the graphic people, they had to bring that idea into a, a label. And so one idea was related to cosmic energy, this next one is related to the earth, uh, another one to the plant, the next one uh, to human being, which who are transforming grapes to wine. So on the label you can see the palm of uh, a hand, and so uh, the, the idea was that there is a handshake between the producer and the consumer, because if the consumer takes the bottle, he uh, has the palm of the producer's hand in the in the bottle. And the last one, the wine itself. So one of the artists makes some paintings with, with the color of the wine. So you see the different colors of the wine on the label. We did uh, the Astra Maps by Matt Mulliken, an American artist, which was very impressed by the fact that in the biodynamic farming we use the forces, the cosmic forces. So do, trying to do every work when moon is and the planets are on certain position, so you can see all the stars and the, the panels. We have 53 of them are positioned in different in the, in the vineyards, but in all the places where a work has to be done. And so the panels, the, the stones remember us to look before we do the work if the moon and the planets are in the right position. Dynamic farming method is the way to use all the forces nature offers you, 
the cosmic forces, the earthly uh, power of forces. And uh, so to build or to create the balance in the cultivated nature, in the agriculture, what we have in the wild nature. Technique is, I think, important today, but we have to do it in, in, a, in a synergy with nature, not against. It's always the same. We consider plant as a, not like a human being, and so we treat it like we treat us, our, we treat ourselves.